Solomon was an intelligent man. He understood more ancient cultures than you could count on all fingers and toes without your socks. He could speak ten languages, three of which no longer existed in the modern world. And if anyone needed to know Egyptian burial rites in a hurry, he was your guy. Nonetheless, he tried and failed to understand the words now coming at him like snowflakes in a blizzard. Lip Philatrum Guide Lycrate Scales Palper Barrel Fission Length What are you- are they? And what do they have to do with my daughter-in-law? The doctor had kind eyes and a gentle manner. Nothing, but they do relate to your grandson. Yugi! Terror washed over him. Please, not after everything else. The past 12 months rated only next to the year. He lost his wife for bad luck. Double ironic. Since things started out so well, with Kokoro and Tamashi, marriage and five minute late to pregnancy. Solomon remembered them standing in his kitchen and Tamashi wrapping his head when he claimed it was customary for prospective grandparents to smooch their daughter-in-law. For luck, he'd said. Oh! I thought I got rid of all the our wooden spoons. Did you bring that thing with you? Be afraid, old man. She grinned. In the West, it's also customary for new babies to receive silver spoons. And I have a lot of Western friends. My skull is whimpering already, Kokoro. You married a harpy. Kokoro had laughed and embraced his wife. Maybe, but I can't say I mind. Your sweet nothings are awful, she said before kissing him. Solomon would give anything to reenact that scene. It wouldn't happen. Three months later, a truck plunged into Kokoro's car. The driver had suffered a heart attack. After free, after crash dieting the Slim into a tuxedo for his own daughter's wedding, the two deaths were so senseless and hit Solomon hard, but Tamashi harder. She stopped smiling the day her husband died. As distractions from her grief, she threw herself into her work and clawed like rabid cats when forced to take early paternity leave by worried colleagues. Solomon asked her to move in as due to a date loomed and in wished he hadn't when he found the empty bottles she didn't bother hiding. Forgetting was Tamashi's coping mechanism of choice. She didn't much care for how she achieved it. She'd been drunk when her water broke. She hadn't been to her parental classes because she was too busy at work and then too embriated. They couldn't give her painkillers because combining them with alcohol in her bloodstream would have killed her. Solomon shut his eyes. Explain and use words I understand, small ones. I can use puppets, too. The doctor joked. Solomon didn't laugh. She sighed. Your son, your grandson, has hallmarks of Photius alcohol syndrome. At this stage, we're not sure of the extent of the damage. FAS often bears out in child development, as a lot of issues are unseen aside from growth deficiencies. It could be just a little small for his age and more prone to infections or getting sick from illness. Other children fight off easy. On the other hand, 
mental retardations is also a possibility. Solomon pictured Kokoro joyfully reading baby names, and Tamashi scouring her family tree for illustrations, ancestors to name the baby. After, after Kokoro died, she lost interest, referring to it only as the baby, when she referred, she referred to it at all. It had fallen to Sir Solomon to name the baby when told by the midwife it was a boy. He opened his eyes and looked hard at the doctor. He already knew what he had to do. He'd known it since the first time he found an empty bottle and heard Bellagrancy in Tamashi's voice when he confronted her with it. This didn't change anything except to hammer home how much his grandson needed him and how much his daughter-in-law needed to get help. Doctor, tell me everything I need to know to raise him happy and healthy.